it's virtually impossible to see the Nazca lines from the ground. To take in their full magnificence, you have to view them from above. The designs which make them famous are iconic. But from down here, all you can see is a vast expanse of desert framed by distant mountains. Only wearing these huge padded sandals can you actually walk on the area where the Nazca lines lie. To go onto the rope and onto this area which covers more than 500 square kilometers of desert in southern Peru. And it's here where thousands of geoglyphs or ground drawings have been etched into the desert here by pulling back these dark black rocks on the surface, revealing the sandy yellow soil underneath. Some of them depict animals, others are vast geometric patterns. And to this day, they remain an enigma. And they are instantly recognizable. Their images grace t-shirts, mugs, and even bus stops in the town. Given UNESCO World Heritage status a quarter of a century ago, the Nazca Lines are a huge pull for tourists, explains Chief Archaeologist for the Lines, Johnny Isla. En la escala de atractivos es el segundo después de Machu Picchu. Eh, es un patrimonio inmenso. Nosotros estamos en la zona nuclear, en un área de 450 kilómetros cuadrados aproximadamente, donde se encuentra la mayor concentración de geoglifos y geoglifos de las épocas Paracas y Nazca. Pero los límites de, este, de esta tradición cultural de hacer geoglifos están 200 kilómetros más al norte en el Valle de Chincha y 250 kilómetros al sur en el Valle de Yauca. Esos son los límites de este territorio, un territorio, como se puede ver, bastante árido, seco, desértico, es uno de los más áridos del mundo, pero está cortado por varios valles o prácticamente oasis en el desierto, donde está la vida cotidiana de la gente de antes y de ahora. And tourism has become an important part of the local economy in Nazca as tens of thousands visit to catch a glimpse of the world-famous lines. This observation tower was built alongside the Pan-American Highway last year. It offers views of some of the curvilinear designs, here the tree, and this etching, believed to be of a toad, an animal which was a herald of rain in the desert. It's very beau, very interesting, but it appears extrêmement euh, étrange autour du, du Mirador d'avoir ces, ces, ces trois lignes et je les pensais euh, beaucoup plus euh, grandes. I'm studying in Japan. I Nazca Nazca I I see textbook. So uh, in the future I want to be a teacher. So I want to be yes. I want to see Nazca. Ah, me pareció bastante interesante, ¿no? Cómo fue que nuestros antepasados, ¿no? Lograron hacer estas figuras con un objetivo, ¿no? Y bueno, y también en tanta calor que hace por aquí, ¿no? Es bastante deslumbrante ver la situación en la que pudieron realizarlo y a pesar de los años que han venido transcurriendo, cómo siguen vigentes, ¿no? Dating back more than a thousand years. Archaeologists believe these unique desert drawings represent the highest expression of their genre. They didn't come out of nowhere, rather are the culmination of a tradition which lasted hundreds of years, says Isla, their chief protector and investigator. Los de Nazca son más conocidos porque se han investigado más desde muchas décadas. Entonces, al ser parte de una larga tradición de, de hacer geoglifos en el desierto, estamos viendo acá en la Pampa de Nazca los geoglifos, eh, los más recientes, los últimos geoglifos que se hicieron y fundamentalmente los estudios indican que se hicieron con, con un propósito central, pedir agua a sus dioses y contribuir a la fertilidad de esta zona que prácticamente es un desierto. Trucks heading south appear to slice through the lines and in the case of this figurative etching of a lizard, the road literally cuts its tail in two. Hard to miss, you might think, yet it took centuries to find these lines because they can only be fully appreciated from the air. In the Nazca's belief system, only their gods in the sky could have seen these vast patterns in the desert. 
which archaeologists believe were to ask for rain in a place where water is the most precious resource. But now hundreds more lines are being discovered nearby. New technology, specifically drones, has helped these archaeologists discover hundreds of new examples of these mysterious desert etchings, which had previously been lost to time. Palpa lies 40 miles to the north of Nazca, and it's where archaeologists like Luis Jaime Castillo are making dozens of new discoveries. Almost too fine to see with a human eye, this drone's eagle eye view reveals desert drawings like this anthropomorphic rendition of an orca or killer whale holding a human head. Yet the new lions do not belong to the Nazca culture, which dated between 200 and 700 AD. Archaeologists believe these smaller forms were carved on these hillsides beforehand by the Paracas and Topara cultures between 500 BC and 200 AD. And the differences don't end there. The fact that you are placing these images in the slopes means that in contrast with the Nazca lines, you can see them if you're standing below in the valley where agriculture and life is happening in this part of the, of the region. In the previous case, in the Nazca lines, we said that these were things done by humans for gods. But these figures that we find in the slopes here in Palpa are made by humans for humans, you see? And they are basically addressing human nature, human aspects. I mean, they are demarcating territories. You know, you are placing the figure of your family members in a place to basically state the fact that this belongs to you, that you were born here, that you, you know, have some rights to this land. They, they are clearly representations of people that they could identify. And wherever these archaeologists go, they seem to find more and more. Here, on a far hillside, more human figures. A warrior wearing a headdress and a female figure, perhaps symbolizing fertility. You have the, the legs and Castillo, the... a former culture minister for his country, has long promoted using drones and other aerial mapping techniques to register archaeological sites. People had used drones in the past, but basically to document, to take pictures of stuff that they had seen. What we are doing is that we are using drones to survey, to record you know, kilometers and kilometers, square kilometers at a time, taking thousands and thousands of pictures, then processing those pictures in very large computers and producing with them three-dimensional models as much as I mean, very detailed images. Images that are so detailed that we can see stones that are one or half an inch across. This little section of the Palpa region... The new technology has enabled them to register the geoglyphs in unprecedented detail using a process called photogrammetry. It uses thousands of overlapping high-resolution photographs to piece together a full 3D model of the markings and place them on a map. Decades before, aerial photographs were key to mapping these geoglyphs. The Nazca Line's most obsessive and eccentric guardian, Maria Reich, used such images to try to decipher them. Living in this simple house in the desert, now a museum, Reich, a German woman who arrived in Peru in the 1940s, spent her life studying and protecting the lines. Some of them are so immense, they stretch for kilometers. Reich believed the huge trapezoids and other geometrical shapes mapped the stars. To make the lines at Nazca with such geometrical precision on such a scale would have required the effort of scores, perhaps hundreds of people, says Isla. This is part of a tradition, and a tradition that now we know has lasted for about 1500, 1600 years. Not only the Nazca, but also there was a tradition long with the Paracas, and then this period of transition that appears to be de un dinamismo mucho más grande. Entonces, desde los geolifos más antiguos, obviamente hay todo un proceso de experimentación, de mejoramiento en la técnica, y los geolifos Nazca son como la culminación de ese proceso. These smaller images were the beginnings which grew into something bigger, from drawings made by households or villages to grand designs made by an organization closer to a state, to 
Isla and Castillo are studying how that change was made between the Paracas hillside geoglyphs and the Nazca culture's epic patterns. There was a gap known as the Topara period. For the archaeologists, the new enigma is this mysterious period of transition.